I don't know how much confidence is inspired by a straight to Netflix sequel 30 years later, but I will say that this Beverly Hills Cop sequel is way better than it potentially could have been. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. This is not a franchise that I'm particularly attached to. I only watched the first one for the first time, I think last year, it was pretty recent. And I thought it was decent. I think it was really carried by the charisma of Eddie Murphy. The charm of this character is very fun to watch. I didn't really like the second one, so I didn't bother with the third one because I've never heard anything good about it. But I was curious what they would do with a new one 30 years after the third film came out. How would they bring it back? And even as someone who's not really attached to this franchise, I'm happy for people that are because I think this is a solid entry. I don't think it's gonna blow people's minds, but I don't think anybody really expected that. I think they just wanted it to not be awful as long as they could see this character again in something that was at least decent. I think a lot of fans will be happy with it. So we'll talk about some of my negatives later, but I do want to start by talking about all the good. Eddie Murphy slips right back into this role. He is the main thing that I enjoyed about the original film. His performance is just so much fun. He's funny. This movie has its good comedic moments. And the character is just a ton of fun to watch. He's this extremely smart ass, foul mouthed guy who will bend and break any and every rule that he has to to get the job done. He's always annoying the piss out of everybody, but he's so smart. He's so good at figuring out all of these things that nobody else can and noticing all of these little details and being kind of more street savvy in many ways and knowing what to look for that all of these other people miss and figuring out these clever ways to, to lie and craft these stories to get into places he shouldn't be and get things that he shouldn't be able to get. And all of that is carried over here. That was the one thing that was the most important, especially for hardcore fans, is nailing this character. And they do. He's still the type of guy that you realize should have been fired like 17 times over and should probably be in jail because of all of the chaos that he causes. But you buy it anyway because of the charm of the character and the performance. And I think they did a good job not leaning too hard on nostalgia. It's there. You have some returning cast members like Judge Reinhold and John Ashford. You have a lot of the same music from the original. Some people might say it's too much, but I didn't mind it because I do like that music. But for the most part, you can watch this movie if you've never seen those originals. There are gonna be characters who pop up where you don't know exactly who they are, but the context is very clear. Like, oh, he knew them from the other movies, fine. Everything you really need to know is explained perfectly in this film. That's probably why they didn't want to call it Beverly Hills Cop 4, so it could be accessible easily on Netflix to people who haven't seen the first three. People aren't gonna be intimidated by the number four, but I have to say, I don't like the title. Even if you had just called it Axel Foley, that would have been better. I know Axel F is the name of the song, it's just not a good title for the movie. Anyway, they could have easily been like, we have to just appeal solely to nostalgia, cram as much in there as possible, make it an exact carbon copy of the first film. Some franchises would do that. Some franchises have done that, but they just treated it the way they would any other sequel, as if they were making a sequel just a couple years after the last one and making it its own standalone thing, which was the right approach. The rest of the cast is good. We have Joseph Gordon-Levitt here, who's teamed up with Eddie Murphy for part of the film, and he was really good. Always love seeing him. Kevin Bacon, who oddly enough is in two new movies releasing this week, this and Maxine. He's way more interesting in Maxine, but it's just cool to see Kevin Bacon at any time. The action is all right. There's nothing in here that's gonna blow anybody's mind in terms of action, but I don't really think people go to Beverly Hills Cop for action. It's got some in it and it's nice to see, but you mainly go for the comedy for Eddie Murphy, for some of those side characters. And so it's a little disappointing that Adil and Bilal were originally supposed to direct this. They're the ones who have done the recent Bad Boys films, but they had to leave this project to go do Batgirl, a film no one is ever going to see. So that's a bit of a shame. I can't help wondering what some of the action would have looked like with them behind it. But it is what it is. Like I said, this is not really an action franchise first and foremost. So 
it's serviceable. You have some good car chases, shootouts, nothing groundbreaking, but it does the job. One thing I'm a little bit mixed on is the character of Axel Foley's daughter. For the most part, I liked their relationship. He's estranged from her. The reason he gets sent back to Beverly Hills this time is because she is wrapped up in something dangerous. And the reasons that there is some distance between them make sense. I enjoyed exploring that. I wanted them to repair their relationship. I thought the actress was mostly doing a pretty good job. But it did feel like it maybe went on a little bit too long without much variety. Like I said, for the most part, the strain in their relationship makes sense. She brings up some valid points to where I understand where she's coming from. But after a while, it does start to feel like, all right, you're taking it a little too far. You're accepting fault for certain things and yet still somehow blaming your dad for those things at the same time. It's starting to get to the point where you don't feel like you have a rational justification for your feelings anymore. And I think it might just be a, a problem with it being a little repetitive. I really liked Axel Foley's chemistry with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character and them together and they had this bit of antagonism between them, but kind of a friendly antagonism in a way, a, a way that doesn't kind of slow down the fun or the comedy, whereas of course his daughter very seriously has issues with her dad, and so she just kind of halts that. And that's like her one thing. That's the main thing she has as a character. She's mainly defined by her relationship with her dad. And so after a while, it's just like, okay, I get it. And you're taking it a little too far. You gotta admit some fault or make up, do a little something to change this up. He's more fun when he's with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and I kind of wish he spent a little more time with him. Daughter character was okay, handled decently at times, I just think it was a little too much. But my main negative is the same negative I have with the original film, which makes me not that attached to it in the first place, is that the story is just really uninteresting. Like, the first film, the entire last act, probably even longer, like the final 45 minutes or something, doesn't have any jokes in it. It's just focused on the plot, and the plot is lame. And that's the case here too. The plot is just generic cop stuff. There's a bad guy, and not a single person is gonna be fooled for a split second as to who the bad guy is. Any kind of reveal that they try to pull we know. It's very obvious, and when you get into the motivation and all the details of this case and this crime, it's completely uninteresting. Again, it's just very generic. This is a bad guy. He's just kind of bad. We'll get him, and there you go. So in the scenes where it is just plot, it's just clue gathering, or it's just the villains speaking, I I'm really just not invested at all. And it actually kind of feels like a good fit for Netflix. I always like to support new movies going to theaters. There's always just something extra that you get from that, something that feels a little bit more special, seeing it for the first time on the bigger screen. But because of this movie's plot, it does kind of feel well suited to Netflix. Netflix really depends on people just kind of turning their stuff on. It doesn't matter whether you like it, as long as you've turned it on and it's good enough so you don't turn it off. And so a plot like this, that's very easy to comprehend if you're not paying attention to it, works perfectly for Netflix, because that's probably what they depend on a lot of the time. Someone's gonna go do chores and they're gonna turn a Netflix movie on in the background and without paying any attention to any of the minutia of the case, like none of that matters at all. The plot is so simple and predictable that you, don't have to pay attention to it, genuinely. You'll still hear the jokes from Eddie Murphy, and when you hear an action scene kick in, you can lock in for a few minutes with that. But yeah, and I'm not advising people watch the movie while they're doing their chores. I'm just saying some people will, and it's the kind of movie where you, you can. And that's all kind of what I expected going in. It was possible that this would have been a bizarre disaster, but best case scenario for me, I thought, Eddie Murphy will be good, the character will be represented well, and the plot's probably going to be the same as it was in the other ones, which is really basic, cliche cop plot. I don't know if they want to do more. If they do, I hope they spice that up. 
that's something they have done with the recent Bad Boys movies. I think the story in Bad Boys 3 and 4 are just way better than the first two. This wasn't just a nostalgic rehash, but it was a little safe. So if they do another one, I would like to see them go a little bit further with the plot. But I'm gonna give Beverly Hills Cop Axel F a three out of five. It was decent, it was totally watchable. It goes by at a good pace. It's two hours long, I didn't really feel like it was slow. I'm never gonna watch it again. I'm not particularly invested in the franchise in the first place, but it was still a fine time and I'm glad that fans have at least something that's halfway decent here. And I'm sure people will enjoy it. If you've never seen any of the movies, you can jump into this one. If you're not a fan of the old ones, probably wouldn't like this one either. But that's all I have to say about that. I'm not just here to tell you my opinion. I want to hear yours as well. Leave your thoughts on the film down in the comments below and on the whole franchise if you're a huge fan or if you're not. Maybe you, you didn't like the old ones, but you actually did like this one. Did you love it? Were you disappointed? Did you get into the character of his daughter? Do you get into the plot of these movies more than I do? Whatever you think, leave your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. I also will have my Maxine review shortly. I hope to see the movie Kill this weekend. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you for the next one.